Hey everyone, welcome back to Positive Mondays, Living with Purpose and Passion. I'm your host, Dave Dietz, here to guide you towards a fuller, more purposeful life, especially as we navigate the later chapters in our lives. Today, we're exploring the topic of reflecting on our past experiences. It includes our successes and yes, even our failures. This reflection is about looking back and gaining insight and wisdom with a greater sense of understanding and purpose. Joining me once again is Gary Yermovich, an expert in health and longevity, clinical medicine, pastoral care, and emotional health. Welcome back, Gary. Always great to have you. It's great to be back with you. So let's start. Uh, so let's start with the importance of reflection. Why is it crucial that we take time to reflect on our past experiences? It's a good point because very often when we do reflect, we're, th- we're thinking about our regrets and what if I'd done something different. And so reflecting is not meant to be kind of like ruminating about past failures or difficulties or even relationships. Uh, what we're talking about is reflecting in a neutral way, looking back to see what did I do? How did I enjoy it? What were some of the, the skills I demonstrated? What are some of the benefits I gained from those experiences? And so it's not thinking back about how I could have been better. Instead, it's taking inventory of where we've been, what we've done, and that can help us in the future. All right, let's take these one at a time. Let's start with successes. How does that spark ideas for how we spend time moving forward? Sure. Well, when you're looking back on your life, it's a good idea to have a a notepad or something like that and write them down. And so you're exploring areas and you want to kind of group them together. And so that'll clarify certain patterns. Um, For instance, uh, I have certain pattern in my life that... uh, I did well um, in grade school, and I was uh, double promoted. Um, And then once I got to high school, um, I barely passed, and I had to do summer school. Why? Because I wasn't really focused on achievement. I wasn't focused on education. And then I entered college. I had that same sort of mindset. And so when I entered college, I flunked out during Vietnam. And so I enlisted in the Air Force. So right now, it's starting to look like this is a real bummer. Um, a college dropout in uh, enlisting in the military during Vietnam War. Uh, but as I started to look at my history, I started to excel in education. Um, and so now I have two bachelor's degrees, two master's degrees, two doctorates. I'm clinically trained as a physician assistant, was in practice for 42 years, um, and I've written 15 books. So where did all this come from? It was one experience after another. And what we need to do is look at our experiences, see what worked, what didn't work, and then go from there. Gotcha. Wow, that's quite a recovery. I read somewhere or I saw it on some podcast somewhere that our memories are stored in like two locations of our brain. Either, you know, you you recall the event is stored in one area. You recall an experience that's stored in one area. But then the feeling of that event or that experience is stored in another area. So is that something that is tied into this, how we we have that past experience where we we have that feeling of success and that we build upon that feeling rather than just the memory of it. Well, that's a good way to look at it, that the amygdala is our emotional center. And very often the amygdala can either be something positive uh, or it can demonstrate something negative. Our tendency as human beings is to focus on the negative. That made me feel so bad. And so when I recall... Be- going through college and flunking out and having to make a decision, do I wait for the draft or do I um, enlist in the Air Force? Um, uh, That can be an emotional sort of ride to go through once again. But to step back and say, wait a minute, let me be a little bit more rational about this. What did I gain from those experiences? And to be honest with you, some of the negative things that have happened to us turn out that they 
are in the long run positive. Mm -hmm. And so I think you're right. Looking at it through a positive lens is something that's helpful. And the amygdala can help us as long as we're aware that we have that tendency to be kind of negative. So avoid going there. All right. So now let's talk about reflecting on our failures. You know, that can be somewhat of a painful journey for some of us. <laughs> it seems like we spend a lot of time trying to let them go or blocking them from our memory. So how can dredging up those negative memories or those unsuccessful events in our life and, and turn them into something that's positive? Well, it can be very humbling to reflect back on some of the areas in which we really didn't perform very well or uh, wrong choices were made. But when we do that, we discover that we also had resilience. We were adaptive. Uh, we became self-aware through failure. And that's not necessarily bad. Um, so instead of looking at this as something that is negative and reflects badly on me, it shows me where my boundaries are, where my limitations are. And that's healthy. That's good for us to be able to do that. That That's part of discovering our purpose is also knowing what areas I, I don't enjoy, I don't want to go into. Um, and so for me, in one of my doctoral programs, I had to take three courses in statistics, um, quantitative statistics, and two in qualitative statistics. I hated it. So let me tell you, I'm not going to get into statistics I'm not going to do that as uh, something I want to um, to um, kind of like do in the future. So I discovered I could do it, but I didn't enjoy it. So I'm not I'm not going there. Um, I also discovered that uh, that I enjoy people. However, I don't enjoy being the boss of people. So I'm not a good supervisor. I'm kind of wishy washy. Uh, when I was a professor teaching students and a student was flunking out, I would talk with that student and I'd have to tell the student, well, unfortunately, you're not going to be in the program any further. And I'd break down in tears. And uh, so the student would be comforting me because I was so upset. And so that's another area I can't get into. I can't get into um, failing people or or being someone that creates a roadblock in someone else's life. Uh, so those are my weaknesses, but in a way it demonstrates an area that I'm strong in. I'm strong in helping others. And so looking beyond their limitations and helping them find a way forward. Yeah. So, so now how would somebody, uh, like you did the self audit where you're, I'm good at this, I'm bad at that, I'm a disaster here, I'm really excel there. How does somebody, it, how does somebody do that self audit? Do they like write it down in two columns, pluses and minuses or pros and cons, or how would you go about doing that? Yeah, kind of like what worked and what didn't work. What is, is positive, what is negative? And uh, so looking at um, kind of like your past experiences that way, I, I think that's a helpful way to do it. So you make two lists. One is areas that I really did not enjoy and don't want to go down that route again. And another list of things I enjoyed and excelled at. And obviously those are the areas that I, I want to focus on, but to be aware of this other area. So I need to make sure that I'm just focused on doing what I'm good at, what I'm skilled at, and what I've demonstrated I can do in the past. Yeah. It sort of uh, gives you an assurance that you're going to be successful at this if you try not to bite off more than you can chew, or maybe you want to be a leader, but maybe you're not a leader, you know, that type of a, that type of a self audit and just come to terms with those things. So that's it. Exactly. Can you discuss a time when things didn't go as planned and how you handled it? Um, well, for me, I was the program director of a, a PA program that I had founded and um, I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed creating the curriculum and, and the students and I really got along really well. Um, but uh, um, I was fired from that job as a program director because I got into an argument with the college president. And that never ends well. That, 
they're there because the college president says you can be there. And if you have disagreement, uh, that's not going to end well. No. Uh, and so he had some problems with racial bias. He didn't like the way that I was uh, inviting people into the program that uh, were diverse. And uh, he thought, we need to invite people into the program that have money, that have connections, that uh, can uh, offer financial support to the university. Um, that was not my focus. And so we got into a disagreement. At that time, my wife had just been diagnosed with ovarian cancer, so I wasn't really focused on meeting his needs. I was more focused on meeting the needs of my wife and my students. Anyway, so he fired me, mm -hmm. and um, that was humiliating. Mm -hmm. But I discovered that uh, once I didn't have the job, that I could find a local job in urgent care as a physician assistant that was five minutes from my home. And so I spent more time with my wife. I had more opportunities to practice clinical medicine. Um, it turned out to be very positive. But you see, it'd be such a tendency to focus on, uh, I got fired. Instead, I had a new opportunity to do something different. And that turned out to be very positive. But that was humiliating. And uh, to this day, um, I'm embarrassed that I got fired. Uh, that had never happened to me before or since, but in a way it was good. I needed that opportunity, and that's what that gave me. Yeah, great way to turn that negative into a positive. I really can probably think of a couple of times where I've had to do that myself. And I'm going to go back now and reflect on some of the my more unsuccessful journeys and try to repurpose them or re 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 tell that story to myself in my head anyway so yeah. can you elaborate on how this shift in perspective is also like a gift of wisdom it is because it tells you something about yourself and so i learned a lot about myself uh, but there is something missing something missing was the sense of integrity that for instance one of the things that uh, that particular job had me do was raise tuition. And I, I mentioned this to the, the dean, said, I don't like the idea of raising tuition. And she said, well, if you want to get a raise every year, you've got to charge the students more. Was that my desire to get a raise every year? It sounds good, except I remember a student coming to me and saying, Tuition just went up, and my my uh, loan uh, won't cover it. And I don't know whether to um, to pay for gas or pay for my my dinner. Uh, what 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 can I do? Well, that broke my heart. And so anyway, so that um, demonstrated that I never want to be captive by position, power or the lure of money. I, I just want to avoid that. So it says something about my, my, my values. And so looking at what you've done, where you've been, the areas that you might not have succeeded in, maybe they say more about your values than it does about your skills. And so to look at it in that perspective. And yeah. I like the way you say, redefine those episodes in our life redefine them according to what did it demonstrate about me as a person? Yeah, well, definitely. It sounds like you, you know, what was the most important thing to you is hanging on to your integrity and not being a, a jerk, you know, and you had compassion and that's what people, you know, why wouldn't you? There's somebody that's tried to change their life and they're struggling to get by in this school and the tuition goes up. That sounds like you're far better off out of that place. So where did you go from there? Once you left there, you had your integrity intact, thank God. So what was the next step for you? Well, the next step was to be in clinical practice. And so I practiced in my specialty, uh, ear, nose, and throat, um, as well as I, I gave lectures in um, health promotion. And so in the military, I'd been a health promotion officer. Uh, and so I, I was very good at talking about uh, holistic health. And so I enjoyed that. So I, I did that at the local um, uh, health 
uh, system. And, um, and so I enjoy that. I'm still doing things of that sort, writing books on health and longevity. And so that, that is where I ended up, and I've thoroughly enjoyed that part of it. So it sounds like our past really reflects us into what we have honed ourselves into today, if we really give it some thought, and really give it some intelligent, realistic, and you know, forgiving uh, self-examination. The, our purpose has to be rooted in our past, both from our experiences as well as our passions. And so uh, having a time to reflect on those areas will give us a blueprint for where to go forward, those areas that, uh, that we want to continue. For instance, um, I have uh, been a professor for 10 years. Um, I enjoyed teaching uh, clinical students when I was in clinical practice. Um, I enjoy lecturing um, to uh, both students as well as to people in uh, healthcare. Um, and so I enjoy those aspects. Is it a surprise then that I've, I'm a tutor, and so I tutor online students that are struggling with reading, with study skills, uh, with comprehension? I enjoy that aspect, and I'm getting accolades back from students. And the thing that really is important to me is the relationships. So building a relationship that's encouraging for students that are struggling has been something that I thoroughly enjoy. And looking back at my past experiences, I can see why that has led to this area of uh, being a tutor and uh, helping people read. I enjoy reading, and so I enjoy writing. And so why not do that for the sake of other people? Yeah. So when you're working with these young people and they're having uh, sort of a bad experience. They're probably frustrated with themselves that they need tutoring or they're struggling with reading. How do you instill, how do you turn that into a positive experience for them? So farther down the road, they can recall that experience and help them move forward in life. Does that make sense? Well, right. This is going to sound a little bizarre, but I've combined my enjoyment of writing with my enjoyment of teaching reading. Mm -hmm. And so I develop and design um, uh, short stories based on the experiences of that young person. And so what I'll do is I develop uh, a kind of like a list of vocabulary words, Mm -hmm. and then I create a story, and they read the story to me, and they can see the areas that they enjoy in the story. Mm -hmm. Instead of taking a, uh, a book from... From, uh, from the internet, I create reading material for them that focuses on their interests. And so one of my, my views is that learning has to be something we enjoy. And learning how to read isn't about reading the individual words. It's reading the concepts, reading and feeling as if you're in, involved in that, uh, in that experience. And so um, maybe I'm overworking it, but I enjoy it. And so why not write a story for a, a young person to read that they feel shares something about who they are and they can learn how to read, but also learn how to view concepts and see themselves within it. Oh, I love that idea. That must make them feel so good when they see a read a story about themselves. Well, I have this one young lady, um, I'm not going to say her name for privacy purposes, but I've written a, an entire book called Layla, the Word Detective. <laughs> and when I first met this young lady, and her name's not Layla, um, when I first met this young lady, she's from Yemen, and she had a stroke several years ago. She's 18 years old. She's entering into senior high school, and, uh, and she had an aneurysm. So several years ago, she had a stroke and she forgot all of her English. And what she told me, she said her nickname at school is No English. Um, O as in N-O English. mm -hmm. I said, well, I want to make it No English, K-N-O-W English. But she said, impossible. I hate English. I will not learn English. 
Well, I wrote this story about Layla, the word detective, and she would read it. And she said, the first time she did this, the first chapter, she said, uh, Mr. Gary, this is the first time I've enjoyed reading. And I, oh, oh my gosh. It, that made me feel very good. And so now she is teaching me. Uh, she's from Yemen and she's teaching me Arabic. But we always look at the comparison of English and Arabic. And she is a linguist. No doubt about it in my mind. She's now taking Spanish. She's talking about taking Russian next semester. She's loving languages. And I feel as if I've had a small role in that just by allowing her to feel passionate about reading something that, uh, that she can see reflects who she is and her values. Oh, absolutely, man. You opened up a whole gate. You helped open up a whole gateway for her, totally changing her life. Now she can explore things that she never dreamed she could go to. She probably was shut those opportunities off. That were, they weren't even in her head that she could do these things. And now look what she's able to do. In fact, yesterday she uh, made a video of looking at how English and Arabic are different as far as their, their structure. Um, a year ago, she never would have thought about doing that. Mm -hmm. And now she's teaching Arabic to young children. She's teaching English to older uh, uh, Islamic women. And she is, she's alive in languages. And, uh, and so it was always there. She needed someone to just stimulate that area, that interest. Exactly. So very, very happy about that. Well, you should be very proud of it. And that's an experience that, a successful experience that you'll have going forward too. Absolutely. You know, it's funny how the, the, um, it, we can be hard on ourselves as we're looking back on our more, less glamorous parts of our life. And, uh, I heard something somewhere, I say this all the time, I heard something somewhere, but when you talk to yourself and when you're experiencing these uh, negative reflections is to be sure not to beat yourself up because the, the solution that I heard was that you talk to yourself the way you would talk to your friend as if your friend is spilling his heart out to you. You wouldn't say, you idiot. How, how could you be so stupid? You would be more understanding. Do you find that as being a, a helpful solution to kind of like helping you get through the, when you're reflecting on some of your failures is not to go down the path of beating yourself up, be kind to yourself? Sometimes we tell ourselves lies that we think of something and we think of it more and more often and we start to believe it we need to say, wait a minute, that's not true. That my experience with that, uh, that university uh, president, um, that wasn't my fault. That, uh, that he had an agenda that I just couldn't meet. And it's okay, he needed me to be out of the way. Frankly, I needed to be out of the way. Um, and so to look at it in a different way, but you're absolutely right, um, Dave, that we need to be careful what we're saying to ourselves because very often it's negative. The recommendation would be start to reflect and start to make a list uh, to reflect on past experiences. But also uh, what I'd like to do next week is uh, uh, what if you want to get paid? Um, what if you want to do something that other people are willing to pay you to do? And uh, so uh, we're going to be talking about that. How do you find a gig or some sort of uh, uh, side hustle that, uh, that won't take up all your time, but you can still earn some money and from the skills you've developed over the years? And uh, what I like to do is uh, show them how you can plug these things into AI and they can brainstorm for you. And so instead of us trying to figure out, you know, what, what sort of things are out there, um, we plug in all of our skills and abilities and ask AI, uh, brainstorm and tell me where, what can I be doing that other people might be willing to pay me to do? 
And uh, and so I, I think that'll be fun next next week. Oh, yeah. That sounds like a lot of fun. I'll be able to get a lot of good information from that, too. I'll definitely be watching. Oh, very good. And what we could do is um, screen share, and I can show them in real life. What okay. Else? Yeah. All right. Oh, awesome. Let's do that. Well, Gary, thank you so much. And thank you to our listeners for tuning in to Positive Mondays, Living with Purpose and Passion. We'll see you next week and we'll learn all about how to make a little money on the side and get some, uh, how to harness the power of artificial intelligence and get more insights and inspiration. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Bye-bye.